do a screen share. All right, so today we are going to be learning about, um, we're gonna be starting a section over, let's extend this out. So energy and chemical reactions. Okay, so I'm gonna be learning about energy and chemical reactions. And so first we need to learn what energy is. Does anybody know what energy is just off the top of their head? To be able to cause change. Yeah, I mean, that's a good good way to put it. Um, specifically in this one, we'll kind of, so yeah, the ability to do work, that's technically the most applicable term, the most general term, because energy can uh, apply to a lot of things, cause change. Or, and this is kind of one of the more important ones, produce heat, okay? So those three things are kind of what energy is in a bubble, okay? Um, and so it's important to know that we have all of those different things that energy can be doing. And we're talking about energy in general. Obviously, there are many, 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 many types of energy. Um, but we're just talking about energy in general. Uh, and so the next thing I want to talk about just really fast is the law of conservation of energy. Okay, so the law of conservation of energy, um, basically it just states that energy isn't created or destroyed, but it changes or converts um, what type of energy it is. So some of you guys uh, might remember, because the last time you probably would have had anything would have been eighth grade, um essentially you have at its most basic core you have potential energy and you have kinetic energy okay those are about as basic as you can make energy um and as you push an object or as an object loses potential energy that potential energy converts into kinetic energy okay energy is in a system and this allows energy to be converted Okay, so we're not losing energy, we're just changing it. All right, does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, um, and so in chemical reactions, the kind of energy that we're mainly looking at at the beginning, okay, so at the beginning of a reaction, we're gonna be looking at chemical potential energy okay so chemical potential energy this is essentially going to be um, energy stored in a substance um, due to its composition does anybody know where energy is stored in compounds in the bonds in the bonds okay so we store energy in the bonds we store energy in the bonds of compounds okay so we store energy in the bonds of compounds this is where we get essentially that stored energy okay um and so kind of when we're looking at these things um we have to understand that there are, well, the thing that we're actually going to be looking at is heat, okay? Heat is what we'll look at afterwards. Heat is what we look at after the change in energy during a reaction, okay? So heat is the uh, essentially energy flowing heat is sorry heat is energy flowing from 
a warmer object to a cooler object. Okay, so heat itself is not like um, energy, it's just heat is a measure of the change of energy. Okay, so heat, heat is the measure of the change in energy due to um, thermal energy flow. Okay, the reason that if you put your hand on like a, uh, on the stove and it hurts is because the heat, okay, the thermal energy is being transferred to you. Your hand is cooler than um, the stove is. Same thing with ice. When you put it there, it feels cold. It's because there's a lot less thermal energy inside of the uh, ice cube. And so your hand is transferring heat from you to that, okay? Uh, so those are the two main things that we look at there. Um, so heat, what do we measure it in? Heat is measured in two units. Okay, you're going to have calories, okay, which is represented uh, with a CAL, or you can use joules, okay, which is just a uppercase J. All right, does anybody have any questions about either of those? Now, when we hear the term calorie, you probably think of like, oh, there's 100 calories in, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something that has like exactly 100 calories. Uh, let's just say a Sprite. I know Sprite has more than that, I think. Um, well, what that's referring to is big C calories, okay? And big C calories are actually kilocalories. Um, but we don't really use those when we're talking about this very often. So calorie is what is actually a kilo, kilo calorie. Okay, and so sometimes they refer to those as big C calories because the, uh, I mean, they use the, the capitalized C there but the more general term is going to be KCAL, kilocalorie, okay? Does anybody have any questions about these? We'll go into a little bit more in depth about what um, a calorie and a joule actually is here in a second. But I do wanna make sure that we are understanding what those are, or that we have an understanding of energy, conservation, what heat is, okay? All right, seems like everybody's doing okay so far. So we will move on. Clear those. Okay, so first of all, calorie. Okay, so what is a calorie? A calorie is a unit in the metric system. That's right. They've been sneaking a metric system unit in and Americans have just been dealing with it, okay? And this is the amount of energy required, which is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of pure water by one degree Celsius. Okay, and so that's what we define. Um, Why would it be in Celsius rather than Kelvin? Just because uh, I think if you were using Kelvin, it's too big of a, a conversion at this point. 
I don't know why they go with Celsius, but in, in this case, they do generally go with Celsius. So, um, okay. again, I couldn't tell you why. It's just that's the way that calories are. Some things use different things. You'll never use Fahrenheit, obviously, but you'll so there's a few that use Celsius. Most of them use Kelvin. Um, again, just kind of one of those things to pay attention to but at least the conversion between Celsius and Kelvin is pretty easy. Just add 273 to it. So um, anyway, uh, so we have, so obviously if you guys had me for biology last year, you learned about how uh, the body breaks down fats and sugars to form carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. Um, and this is what is known as an exothermic reaction, okay? So our body tends to give off heat, okay, when we do that. And that's because our body is essentially making or taking those calories uh, and doing all those things. Uh, when our body, when we eat those things, our body is going to generate a certain number of calories. Um, and those are big C calories, kilocalories, okay? So that means if butter was burned to produce carbon dioxide and water, um, like if you're going to take just, let's say, a tablespoon of butter has about 100 big C calories, 100 kilocalories. If you burn that, it's going to produce carbon dioxide and water, and it will release 100 kilocalories. Okay. And so that's what our body does when we. When you're eating food and doing stuff like that, your body is making ATP, water, carbon dioxide, and then whatever the number of calories are that you're eating, you're essentially releasing that into your body. Um, and that is just part of the exothermic reaction. And that's why uh, the digestion of food is an exothermic reaction. Heat is created, okay? Does anybody have any questions there? Okay. And so this one is primarily used for when you're talking about heat. The other one, a joule, okay? This is just the SI, so the Sistema International, or um, the International System, uh, unit of energy and heat, okay? So one joule is equal to oh, excuse me uh, 0 0.2390 calories okay you can also put that as one calorie is equal to four point one eight four joules okay um and so those are just factors converting factors that you can use um if you're needing to convert between joules and calories for any reason um, but generally they're both pretty well accepted one way or the other okay does anybody have any questions about either of those Calories are more or less what we're going to be interested in when we are looking at this sort of stuff. But joules are, again, both are used. Um, I guess it kind of just depends on what exactly you're looking for. Okay. Um, but anyway. So what we're going to be looking at next is going to be specific heat okay now i remember in my chem one class in college specific heat was something that we never talked about nor was any of this stuff really when i was in my high school chemistry class we definitely focused a lot more on the basics of um what was i going to talk about uh we focused on the basics of just 
how to make equations, how to uh, set up equations, all stuff that we've already done. Um, but I do remember doing a specific heat and calorimetry lab, and I had absolutely no idea what we were doing. Um, so this is, I think, is one of the more important things for you guys to learn as well. Um, but anyway, so specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature. Oh, and this is going to sound real familiar. Of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Okay, so this is why we generally like to use um, calories for this sorts of stuff, okay? Um, and different substances have different specific heats, okay? Okay, so think about it. If you guys are at the beach, like have you guys ever been, have you guys been to the ocean? So I can think specifically when I was a junior, we went to, for National Deca, we went to Orlando, Florida. Um, and we went to Cocoa Beach one day and it was probably uh, 95 to 100 degrees. Uh, sun was just blazing. And these are like white sand beaches uh, and then just pretty clear oceans, okay? If I was standing in the ocean, my feet didn't feel like hot, hot, right? Obviously the water was warm, but it wasn't like burning. But you could go step on the sand and the sand was incredibly hot. Why do you think the sand was so much hotter than the water, even though they both were getting the same sun on it? Because they absorb light in different ways. They absorb light and they absorb uh, essentially that um, radiant energy, which they convert into that thermal energy in different ways. Exactly, which is kind of what we're talking about with specific heat. Okay, so an example, on a beach, sand feels much hotter than water, than the ocean. Okay, even though they receive the same radiant energy. Okay, and this is due to the fact that water has a much higher specific, specific heat than sand does, okay? Water has a pretty high specific heat in general. Um, essentially, it has that you just need to absorb water's specific heat is it needs to absorb one calorie uh, for every gram of water. Or 4.184 joules per gram of water. Okay. Uh, and so again, that's just kind of we have all of these sorts of different things. Uh, I mean, just looking at this, the, the example they give is a little bit different. It's talking about if you were in a fountain and the fountain has a bunch of concrete around it, the specific heat of concrete is 0.84 joules, okay? So it's super, super less, okay? So concrete specific heat is gonna be equal to 0 0.84 joules per gram. Joules. Okay, all right. So 
water has a very high specific heat again, which is a reason that we use it for a lot of different things. Um, some of the next highest stuff is going to be things like uh, ethanol has a pretty high specific heat, but you can keep going down. There's a lot of other things that have very uh, much lower specific heats. Okay. <sighs> All right. You know what? Let's go ahead and call it for today.